Lesson 8 Christ Shaped Lives and Spirit Inspired Speech Sabbath Afternoon August 12 Let us keep our eyes fixed upon Christ and He will preserve us. Looking unto Jesus, we are safe. Nothing can pluck us out of His hand. In constantly beholding Him, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 It was thus that the early disciples gained their likeness to the dear Savior. Those disciples were men subject to like passions as we are. James chapter 5, verse 17 They had the same battle with sin to fight. They needed the same grace in order to live a holy life. Even John, the beloved disciple, the one who most fully reflected the likeness of the Savior, did not naturally possess that loveliness of character. He was not only self-assertive and ambitious for honor, but impetuous and resentful under injuries. But as the character of the Divine One was manifested to him, he saw his own deficiency and was humbled by the knowledge. The strength and patience, the power and tenderness, the majesty and meekness that he beheld in the daily life of the Son of God filled his soul with admiration and love. Day by day his heart was drawn out toward Christ until he lost sight of self in love for his Master. His resentful, ambitious temper was yielded to the molding power of Christ. The regenerating influence of the Holy Spirit renewed his heart. The power of the love of Christ wrought a transformation of character. This is the sure result of union with Jesus. When Christ abides in the heart, the whole nature is transformed. Christ's Spirit, His love, softens the heart, subdues the soul, and raises the thoughts and desires toward God and heaven. Steps to Christ, pages 72 and 73 if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 Through the power of Christ, men and women have broken the chains of sinful habit. They have renounced selfishness. The profane have become reverent. The drunken, sober. The profligate, pure. Souls that have borne the likeness of Satan have become transformed into the image of God. This change is in itself the miracle of miracles. A change wrought by the Word, it is one of the deepest mysteries of the Word. We cannot understand it. We can only believe, as declared by the Scriptures, it is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Acts of the Apostles, page 476. Sunday, August 13, The Downward Spiral of Sin It was when the Israelites were in a condition of outward ease and security that they were led into sin. They failed to keep God ever before them. They neglected prayer and cherished a spirit of self-confidence. Ease and self-indulgence left the citadel of the soul unguarded, and debasing thoughts found entrance. It was the traitors within the walls that overthrew the strongholds of principle and betrayed Israel into the power of Satan. It is thus that Satan still seeks to compass the ruin of the soul. A long, preparatory process unknown to the world goes on in the heart before the Christian commits open sin. The mind does not come down at once from purity and holiness to depravity, corruption, and crime. It takes time to degrade those formed in the image of God to the brutal or the satanic. By beholding, we become changed. By the indulgence of impure thoughts, man can so educate his mind that sin, which he once loathed, will become pleasant to him. The mind is educated to familiarity with sin that the once tender conscience becomes hardened and they dwell upon these things with greedy interest. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 459 
To hate and reprove sin and at the same time to show pity and tenderness for the sinner is a difficult attainment. The more earnest our own efforts to attain to holiness of heart and life, the more acute will be our perception of sin and the more decided our disapproval of any deviation from the right. We must guard against undue severity toward the wrongdoer, but we must also be careful not to lose sight of the exceeding sinfulness of sin. There is need of showing Christ-like patience and love for the erring one, but there is also danger of showing so great toleration for his error that he will look upon himself as undeserving of reproof and will reject it as uncalled for and unjust. He who has blunted his spiritual perceptions by sinful leniency toward those whom God condemns will ere long commit a greater sin by severity and harshness toward those whom God approves. By the pride of human wisdom, by contempt for the influence of the Holy Spirit, and by disrelish for the truths of God's word, many who profess to be Christians and who feel competent to teach others will be led to turn away from the requirements of God. Paul declared to Timothy, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. The Acts of the Apostles, pages 503 and 504. Monday, August 14. A Dramatic Change of Clothing The Apostle admonishes his brethren in the name and by the authority of the Lord Jesus, that after having professed the gospel, they should not conduct themselves as did the Gentiles, but should show by their daily deportment that they had been truly converted. Put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Once they were corrupt, degraded, enslaved by lustful passions. They were drugged by worldly opiates, blinded, bewildered, and betrayed by Satan's devices. Now that they had been taught the truth as it is in Jesus, there must be a decided change in their life and character. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, pages 171 and 172. It is by the renewing of the heart that the grace of God works to transform the life. No mere external change is sufficient to bring us into harmony with God. There are many who try to reform by correcting this bad habit or that bad habit, and they hope in this way to become Christians, but they are beginning in the wrong place. Our first work is with the heart. If studied and obeyed, the Word of God works in the heart, subduing every unholy attribute. The Holy Spirit comes to convict of sin, and the faith that springs up in the heart works by love to Christ, conforming us, body, soul, and spirit, to His will. God's Amazing Grace, page 223. We are to accept of Christ as our personal Savior, or we shall fail in our attempt to be overcomers. It will not answer for us to hold ourselves aloof from him, to believe that our friend or our neighbor may have him for a personal savior, but that we may not experience his pardoning love. We are to believe that we are chosen of God, to be saved by the exercise of faith through the grace of Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit and we are to praise and glorify God for such a marvelous manifestation of His unmerited favor. It is the love of God that draws the soul to Christ, to be graciously received and presented to the Father. Through the work of the Spirit, the divine relationship between God and the sinner is renewed. The Father says, I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. I will exercise forgiving love toward them and bestow upon them my joy. They shall be to me a peculiar treasure, 
for this people whom I have formed for myself shall show forth my praise. Our High Calling, page 77. Tuesday, August 15. Unity Building, Grace-Filled Speech. Jesus is our example, not only in his spotless purity, but in his patience, gentleness, and winsomeness of disposition. His life is an illustration of true courtesy. He had ever a kind look and a word of comfort for the needy and the oppressed. As he saw men weary and compelled to bear heavy burdens, he shared their burdens and repeated to them the lessons he had learned from nature, of the love, the kindness, the goodness of God. He sought to inspire with hope the most rough and unpromising, setting before them the assurance that they might attain such a character as would make them manifest as children of God. Gospel Workers, page 121. The religion of Jesus softens whatever is hard and rough in the temper and smooths whatever is rugged and sharp in the manners. It makes the words gentle and the demeanor winning. Let us learn from Christ how to combine a high sense of purity and integrity with sunniness of disposition. A kind, courteous Christian is the most powerful argument that can be produced in favor of Christianity. Kind words are as dew and gentle showers to the soul. The scripture says of Christ that grace was poured into his lips, that he might know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4. And the Lord bids us, let your speech be always with grace, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Colossians chapter 4 verse 6 and Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Gospel Workers, page 122. The Apostle, seeing the inclination to abuse the gift of speech, gives direction concerning its use. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, he says, but that which is good to the use of edifying. The word corrupt means here any word that would make an impression detrimental to holy principles and undefiled religion. Any communication that would eclipse the view of Christ and blot from the mind true sympathy and love. It includes impure hints which, unless instantly resisted, lead to great sin. In all his teaching, Christ presented pure, unadulterated principles. He did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Constantly there flowed from his lips holy, ennobling truths. He spoke as never man spoke, with a pathos that touched the heart. Cultivate a prayerful frame of mind and educate the tongue to speak right words that will bless in the place of discouraging. Talk of the goodness, the mercy, and the love of God. Put away all unbelieving words and all that is cheap and common. Let the words be sound words that cannot be condemned, and the peace of God will surely come to the soul. In Heavenly Places, page 175. Wednesday, August 16. The Holy Spirit in the Believer's Life. The Holy Spirit was promised to be with those who were wrestling for victory in demonstration of almightiness, endowing the human agent with supernatural powers and instructing the ignorant in the mysteries of the kingdom of God. That the Holy Spirit is to be the grand helper is a wonderful promise. Of what avail would it have been to us that the only begotten Son of God had humbled himself, endured the temptations of the wily foe, and wrestled with him during his entire life on earth, and died the just for the unjust, that humanity might not perish, if the Spirit had not been given as a constant, working, regenerating agent to make effectual in our cases what has been wrought out by the world's Redeemer? The imparted Holy Spirit enabled his disciples, the apostles, to stand firmly against every species of idolatry and to exalt the Lord and him alone. 
who but Jesus Christ by his spirit and divine power guided the pens of the sacred historians that to the world might be presented the precious record of the sayings and works of Jesus Christ. Selected Messages, Book 3, page 137. In the work that was accomplished on the day of Pentecost, we may see what can be done by the exercise of faith. Those who believed in Christ were sealed by the Holy Spirit. As the disciples were assembled together, there came a sound as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And Peter stood up among them and spoke with mighty power. Among those who listened to him were devout Jews who were sincere in their belief. But the power that accompanied the words of the speaker convinced them that Christ was indeed the Messiah. What a mighty work was accomplished! Three thousand were converted in one day. More were converted by one sermon on the day of Pentecost than were converted during all the years of Christ's ministry. So mightily will God work when men give themselves to the control of the Spirit. Ellen G. White comments in the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 6, page 1055. The promised Holy Spirit, whom he would send after he ascended to his Father, is constantly at work to draw the attention to the great official sacrifice upon the cross of Calvary and to unfold to the world the love of God to man and to open to the convicted soul the precious things in the scriptures and to open to darkened minds the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness, the truths that make their hearts burn within them with the awakened intelligence of the the truths of eternity. Selected Messages, Book 3, page 137. Thursday, August 17. Kindness, not bitterness. Satan claims the world, he claims us as his. Then shall we give him that which he claims? No. I am somebody else's property. I have been bought with a price, and my business is to glorify God in my body and spirit. I have no time to talk unbelief. It is faith that I must talk. I must strengthen faith by exercise, and then my faith grows as I venture upon the promises of God, and I can grasp more and more. One word of doubt, one word of evil thinking and evil speaking makes room for more of the same kind. It is seed sowing that will prepare for a harvest that few will care to garner. Those who are troubled with doubts and have difficulties which they cannot solve should not throw other weak minds into the same perplexity. Some have hinted or talked their unbelief and have passed on little dreaming of the effect produced. In some instances, the seeds of unbelief have taken immediate effect, while in others, they have lain buried quiet a length of time until the individual has taken a wrong course and given place to the enemy and the light of God has been withdrawn from him and he has fallen under the powerful temptations of Satan. Then the seeds of infidelity, which were sown so long ago, spring up. Satan nourishes them and they bear fruit. Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 2, page 676. Remember that your brethren are fallible creatures like yourself, and regard their mistakes and errors with the same mercy and forbearance that you wish them to exercise toward you. They should not be watched and their defects paraded to the front for the world to exult over. Those who dare to do this have climbed upon the judgment seat and made themselves judges while they have neglected the garden of their own hearts and have allowed poisonous weeds to obtain a rank growth. We individually have a case pending in the court of heaven. Character is being weighed in the balances of the sanctuary and it should be the earnest desire of all to walk humbly and carefully lest neglecting to let their light shine forth to the world they fail of the grace of God and lose everything that is valuable. All dissension, 
All differences and fault-finding should be put away with all evil speaking and bitterness. Kindness, love, and compassion for one another should be cherished, that the prayer of Christ, that his disciples might be one as he is one with the Father, may be answered. The harmony and unity of the Church are the credentials that they present to the world that Jesus is the Son of God. Genuine conversion will ever lead to genuine love for Jesus and for all those for whom he died. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, pages 278 and 279. For further reading, In Heavenly Places, Don't Retaliate, page 176, and The Upward Look, Light versus Darkness, page 20.